Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. So I wanted to uh, thank all the devotees for joining us today and uh, seek your uh, good wishes and your uh, blessings so that we can say something and uh, um, exchange some experiences to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his devotees, especially Srila Prabhupada. So uh, I wanted to, um, I thought what we could do this session was uh, just do a very quick overview of the 18 chapters that uh, the, the whole Bhagavad Gita, maybe a very quick overview. And then um, go through all the different lessons. We won't be able to cover all of them in one session, but hopefully today and tomorrow may be enough. The idea is, uh, it's wonderful that uh, we've been able to uh, read the translations of the Bhagavad Gita and go through the different themes and associate some uh, learnings from those themes. But it's also important to um, try to put those learnings into our lives, into practice, because that is the whole idea of the Bhagavad Gita, to reform us uh, internally, externally, uh, in every way possible, so that we can become closer to the Supreme Lord. So, uh, let's do a quick overview first. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So first chapter begins with Arjun uh, setting out his dilemma and why he doesn't want to fight. Krishna takes him into the middle of the battlefield as requested by Arjun. And he sees um, his uh, beloved grandfather, his guru, his cousins, his uncles on the other side. Um, and realizing that this is a, a real issue that he has now. So he lays out some reasons as to why not to fight. And in the second chapter, he surrenders onto Krishna and um, Krishna very kindly takes him out of the material conception of life immediately and he places him at this uh, level of the spirit. So he explains to him that his identity is a spirit soul and he has duties both in material duties, swadharma, as well as eternal sanatan dharma, which he has to fulfill. And Krishna also explains to him about the nature of a person who is fulfilling the duties especially from the point of view of the Sanat and uh, eternal duties. Then in the third chapter, Krishna describes how one can do one's action and not be attached to the fruits. And in that way, we set an example to the world and avoid sinful reactions. Um, and in the fourth chapter, Krishna describes about transcendental knowledge, how it's passed down from generation to generation, how he started that process of transcendental knowledge by giving it to Ikshwaku, who passed it on to Vivaswan, or was it the other way around? Vivaswan, <laughs> and then passed it on to Ikshwaku. But it's been lost, and he's reestablishing it again by telling Arjun. And Arjun is asking him, how is this possible? Vivaswan is older to you by age. Uh, so Krishna explains, I remember all my births, whereas you can't. So that's one of the differences between Krishna and us, this, uh, us Jivatmas. Then Krishna explains his mission and his prime mission. Well, his secondary mission is to um, uh, reestablish dharma <laughs> and uh, destroy the demons. But the primary reason is Janma Karma Chame Devya. He's come to give us this knowledge so that we can go back to him. That's his reason of coming. And then Krishna explains different uh, actions um, karma, a karma, and vi karma, explaining to Arjun how these different actions can have different effects from the karmic point of view. And then, fifth chapter, Krishna talks again about karma yoga, but in th this time, uh, not being attached to the fruits, but actually um, uh, um, giving those fruits to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the impact of that is one immediately comes on the transcendental platform where one can see everyone with equal vision, samadarshana. Um, so souls may appear in different bodies, but one sees through the bodies and into the soul. 
And this is uh, the, the way of the self-realized personalities like Srila Prabhupada. Sixth chapter, Krishna describes the Ashtanga Yoga process because he wanted to explain to Arjuna, if you want to go to the forest, then this is the process you have to follow, which is very challenging. And Arjuna said that to Krishna, that yes, it's very hard to control the mind. I can control the wind, but the mind is not so easy to control. And Krishna describes to him how to control the mind by practice and detachment. And then Arjuna also inquires, what happens to that person who fails? That yogi who is unsuccessful, is neither here nor there, is neither in the material world because he's given it up, and neither in the spiritual world because he's failed. And Krishna described him, that one who takes to this path of uh, spiritual, spirituality uh, is never a loser. Never a loser. He always, uh, we, uh, wherever he leaves off, he'll start again. So he never loses. Then the patch, the six chapters of Bhakti Yoga start because up to now it was uh, Karma Yoga, the theme basically. And seventh chapter, Krishna describes where he can be perceived in this world and who approaches him, who doesn't approach him. He also describes the result of worshipping uh, other than. Krishna, the devatas, for example, demigods. Then the eighth chapter, Arjuna asks uh, wonderful questions, and specifically about the time of death, and Krishna describes in some detail what happens at the time of death. If one thinks on it, one goes to him. And that's um, a wonderful description Krishna gives in the, that chapter. Then nine chapters, the most confidential knowledge Krishna gives, uh, and hint of, to Arjuna about his inconceivable nature and the value of serving him compared to the demigods. How the demigods' fruits are temporary and limited, whereas one who worships him goes to his supreme planet in the spiritual sky from which one never returns. Tenth chapter, uh, Krishna describes in some detail where he can be perceived in this world. And 11th chapter, Arjuna asks to see his universal form, which Krishna shows him. This frightens Arjuna because he can see the enemy and his own soldiers being smashed to pieces by Krishna's universal form. And uh, then Krishna um, finally reveals his four-handed form and then his two-handed form, which is very rare to perceive. So we are very fortunate that we are able to, by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, have some little understanding of this glorious form of Krishna, two-handed, three-bended, bending form, three bandhananda. Very, very beautiful. Twelfth chapter is um, uh, about bhakti yoga. Uh, Arjuna is asking Krishna, is it better to worship your uh, personal form or your impersonal form? Krishna describes that to worship my personal form is much easier than my impersonal form. And then he also describes the process of bhakti yoga, um, uh, how one should try to fix his mind on Krishna. If one can't fix one's mind and uh, follow the rules of uh, bhakti yoga, if you can't do that, then work for Krishna. If you can't do that, then um, uh, what was it? Uh, meditate on him if, go, or gain knowledge of him ultimately, and, and even better than that, is renouncing the fruits of action. And then Krishna describes uh, who's the, the, the nature of these devotees who are so dear to us. Uh, there's eight verses he describes is uh, the nature of the devotees. And then the six chapters start on Gyam Yoga. Krishna gives a lot more information because Arjun asks for information about this world, uh, the field of knowledge, the... Um, uh, Noor and Ishwara, he asks so many questions and Krishna gives him in some detail the answers. And then in the 14th chapter, Krishna describes this world, the three modes of material nature, how they act, how we are completely uh, bound by these three modes whilst in this world, especially if we're not uh, Krishna conscious, and also how we can become free from those three modes. 15th chapter, Krishna describes the overall nature of this world, how it compares to the spiritual world and how uh, the temporary nature of this world and how the relationship of the jiva and himself and the super soul to both this world and the spiritual world. In the 16th chapter, Krishna describes the divine and demoniac qualities, focusing on the demoniac qualities so that 
we can understand that we also have these demoniac qualities and we need to try to overcome them and acquire divine qualities. And generally that's done through the process of uh, engaging in bhakti, especially chanting the Maha Mantra. And then the 17th chapter, Krishna describes, again, uh, within the three modes of material nature, the uh, different um, uh, aspects of worship, food, charities, austerities. This is just to guide us how we can behave in the best way in this world and progress towards the supreme destination. And then the 18th chapter, which we looked at yesterday, Krishna talks about renunciation because Arjun asks him, uh, whether it's better to renounce or uh, be a tyagi or sannyasi, and then Krishna describes emphatically that yes, uh, you must act, you must do your duty, but in the sense of uh, renunciation, don't be attached to the fruits. And again, he explains a bit more about the three modes, explains about Varnashram, and finally concludes, he gives the Paramam Vacha that um, one should surrender onto him. And this is the overall context of the Bhagavad Gita. The overall lesson is always remember Krishna, never forget him. Those are the two basic rules. And if we can do that, then we're living the Bhagavad Gita. And he also describes how one who gives this supreme secret to the devotees uh, is very, very dear to him. So that's uh, a brief summary of Bhagavad Gita. So I wanted to, now let's see if I can find it. Uh, look at the, the lessons. Uh, okay, good. Uh, idea was um, that we go through s s these lessons and s I, I'd quite like to hear whether devotees are able to uh, apply these lessons in our own lives. If not now, at least we know that this is something that we want to put into practice at some point in our life. So I would love the audience to share as we're going along, um, what are these different lessons and have I already put them in practice uh, or am I, well, I want to put them in practice. Maybe even before we were going through this, I have something I already was practicing. Um, the audience are welcome to share, it would be so nice to hear. Um, your experiences and whether you think this is practical, this is not practical, so that we can even refine these lessons because this is not just a, a one-off intellectual exercise that we've just gone through, but it's something that we want to live and put into our lives. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Um, so, uh, on the basis that everybody's quiet, <laughs> I'm going to carry on. The first uh, chapter, there were actually uh, six lessons. I think this was the chapter with the most lessons, mm. six, cha six lessons from the first chapter. Because uh, Luther Rasta was blind, he's uh, seeking help from Sanjay. And that's quite an important lesson. We often will need some help because we are... Um, material, we're in a material condition where there we are, uh, we have, we're subject to the four defects. Um, we tend to make mistakes. Um, what are the other things? And, uh, no, what are the four defects of uh, memory? We, we don't live long. Hmm. Madhusan Prabhu, do you remember what the four defects are? One is that uh, we commit mistake. commit mistake, we're in illusion. That's two. Uh, illusion, yes. What was that? Yes. Illusion, commit mistake. Yeah. Uh, uh, our senses are not perfect. <laughs> our senses yes, are not perfect. Yeah. And what was the fourth and one? Fourth one. Ignorance. Yeah, illusion. That's right. Um, Ignorance. Illusion. That's correct. We in illusion. Tendency to get cheated and. Cheating, yeah. cheating, yeah. cheating, That's right. cheating, cheating propensity. Yeah. That's it. Cheating That's propensity. It. Yes. Cheating propensity. That's wonderful. No, thank you very much for that. So we we need help. So just like Dhritarashtra is seeking help uh, from Sanjay, even though he's the king, 
Uh, it's quite a humbling position when you have to ask for help. So, but it's something that um, is a lesson for us to learn. Uh, is a lesson for us to learn. Um, so that if, uh, when we need help, we're humble enough to ask it. Right? So that's the first one. Second lesson um, was that um, the Duryodhan had uh, huge, huge expectations, huge expectations. Um, he was counting his army, he's blinded by greed, envy, desire, I, me and mine. So the second lesson was that this is something that instilled into us from our very birth, that we should be the center of everything. Um, we are brought up in that uh, conditioning, unfortunately. And if our expectations are not met, we become angry, become frustrated. So the lesson to learn from that was, we should lower expect our expectations from others. What we expect from others, lower it, otherwise it'll end up in frustration. Does that make sense? It's more than lower. <laughs> Make, Make it, it lower. Humbler. Make, lower it lower, lower than, Make it lower than zero. Is that what you're saying, Suresh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. The happiness is in no expectations. No expectations. Yeah. Rather, rather now we expect the unexpected. <laughs> Well, if we don't expect and we get the, that, that is a blessing. Yes, yes. I like that. I like that. So you guys, you want me to change that? Have no expectations? I mean, are you being really heavy, huh? Um, yes, <laughs> I agree. No expectations, so you don't get hurt. <laughs> Very hard to live like this in this world, right? It is. Especially when but, you are talking about your children, for example, because you raise them up, you're going to have expectations. No, yeah. but then if you learn uh, not to have any expectation from anywhere, then the life is more peaceful and you're comfortable. Happy. Yeah, you're happy. <laughs> and then your happiness is the last thing you want, is the peace. Peace, it? right? Peace will bring happiness anyway. But if so, your expectations are, oh, I, I want this, I want this, I want this, your your want will never finish. Mm -hmm. Should not be desire. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it will never finish. So you guys are a lot harder than I am, huh? You want sorry? there to be no expectations. You want me to change this, yeah? Yeah. Because, we, because life has, if life has hit you that hard, then your expectation will automatically go nil. Yeah, true. Hare Paul. Hare Krishna. Uh, <laughs> uh, I lost the thought now. Uh, <laughs> you, if, you, <laughs> if you expect and if you don't get it, of course you get hurt, but it's easy said than done. It's very mm. difficult. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. Pretty, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was just thinking it's uh, very close to that as well, like to have no expectations um, when you come across uh, an obstacle, like you focus on solutions and stuff. It's like I said, if you, you know, you, you've raised your kids and you want something, but again, that's expectations. It's like you've got to let them go. You've done all you can. and this other stuff like um, like uh, when when you're pra when I, when you're practicing um, Krishna consciousness with like within the family environment like at home um, you can't be pushing everyone to say no one you no garlic in the food or everything must be brush out it's like you can only lead by example and not push anyone because that would be like expecting them to do something. So again, it's it's more like okay, you have a issue, you, you just focus on the solution as well. I mean, that's two things I'm putting in there. But um, mm. if, like, say, 
you're 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 doing teamwork with someone um and and unfortunately they don't stick to the schedule or something then what do you do in that instant do you again i mean i would only think you could only keep focusing on the solution but if they don't do their part it's it's like you just you you, you don't you don't work with them again or, or how would you go about telling them you know <laughs> that you need certain things done on time or like for them to stick mm. to their word because then you can't work with them if, if they're not reliable, you know? Mm. Then what do you do? I mean, do you carry on with the project where you do need a few people together uh, because the project isn't something one can do just by themselves. They could try and just see where they get, but mm. yeah. yeah. It, it's like uh, this saying, isn't it? Uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Mm -hmm. So we always want to try to engage with others and because then the task gets a little bit easier to perform. But if the other parties or party doesn't do any, it doesn't fulfill their part of the bargain, if you like, mm -hmm. then what do we do? Do we walk away? Do we continue our doing ourselves? What about the expectations levels at that point? That's what you're saying, right? Basically yeah like yeah then then what to do there you know do mm. we just drop that project altogether do we mm. of course it just makes sense to look for more you know somebody else to fill fill that shoes to make mm. that project happen but then say if the other people are still want to be in part of the project but they're just not living up to their end you know mm. like not committed enough mm. Mm. yeah it's a good point i think from I would just want to look, look at it from the spiritual point of view. If you're doing anything, like you yourself, for example, are involved with the ch children's drama. And I can see situations there where, because you're dealing with such a wide range of uh, age groups, um, as well as parents, that sometimes there may be situations where, you know, there's not enough practice taking place or, you know, and you're thinking, mm, maybe we should uh, abandon this uh, this person so that we get somebody a bit more competent in. Do we do that? Do we lower expectations or do we keep on? I, I, my personal view is that we, we keep endeavoring. Uh, I think from the spiritual side, I don't think we should lower our expectations. We can request the person, please, um, you know, we need to get this done and this is what needs to be done please, can we do it? Can we do it? Can I help you do it? Because the spiritual thing is a win-win. A uh, if we say, um, don't take everybody along with us, um, there's, there's something missing, you know? There's something missing. We've always, I think we've always had the mood. It's not been always reflected, um, but that let's do everything together. If somebody shows a little enthusiasm, but they don't really have the competence, it doesn't really matter. I, I'll give you an example. There was one lady, um, I, won't, I won't share her name, uh, years and years ago, about nearly 25 years back, she used to come and do the vases in the temple, but then she was eating meat. So there was a lot of um, discussion as to whether she should be allowed to do that service because she was eating meat. And I think me and Jenti had the view that, look, if you don't allow someone to do the service, how are you gonna inspire them? And it so happened later on, a few years later, that person became vegetarian, started chanting 16 rounds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think if, if we sort of don't let them be themselves uh, <clears throat> and impose, as you said, you have to eat onion and garlic, not to eat onion and garlic, you know, you don't want to do that. If you impose yourself, you may just lose that person completely. Whereas if we, not saying completely relax the rules, but give some leeway so that they can operate within sort of boundaries which they understand, but yet understand that there are, I can make further advancement. Then I think we have to have some leeway so that they can grow. I don't know if that sort of makes sense. Yes, it does, Prabhu. It does. Yeah.
it may uh, slow us down, it may definitely slow us down, um, but it depends on our, our goal. It's, a lot depends on the circumstances. I hear what you're saying because not every solution fits within that scenario I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's circumstance by circumstance, I think. I think uh, when, it, when it comes to expecting, you know, we, we expect that a certain standard has to be maintained and common sense will be applied and all that sort of thing, you know, mm. in life that we generally go through, you know, and, and you expect that, uh, you know, as a good citizen, you will follow the laws of the country, you will follow the laws of nature and this, that, whatever, you know. There's some expectations are obviously there, but the expectations here are that we, on, on a level of where uh, it, it brings about personal frustrations, you know, mm. at, at our own personal level. So we, we're addressing that, you know, where, what is it that's going to frustrate you, you know, <laughs> because you were expecting a lot from someone or you know, like, for example, my, you know, or on children sometimes, you know, parents expect a lot. And then when the children be themselves, then you get frustrated, as, you know, uh, and then that was an expectation. So as one of the one great philosopher said, you know, uh, he said, your children, uh, you know, they come through you, not for you, you know, <laughs> and uh, they come through you and it, it is life expresses through through yourself. So children, you know, you have to allow your children to be children. So that, that, that there's that sort of um, expectations, obviously there, you know, you, you expect yourself to maintain a certain amount of standard. So there is certain expectations, but then on one level, there is uh, expectation which, you know, don't allow yourself to get so frustrated. So it, it's, it's a questioning or internal meditation that you have to go, like you say, you have to take time to contemplate. That's one of the part of a lesson, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, then start to learn to sort of give rather than take. So these mm -hmm. are all part of the lessons, you know, and, yeah. and they all support each other rather. You know, I would, I would see that all the lessons here, mm. They, they actually support each other mm -hmm. and then uh, you, you make it as practical as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and like you say, if you have challenges, you come across a challenge, you expect yourself to face that and, uh, you know, and, and you expect not yourself to give, you, to give yourself excuses. So I think the, all the lessons mm -hmm. are very important, but they mm -hmm. support each other. They, they work together with each other as well. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. I see it anyway. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, ni nicely put together. Thank you for that. Nicely. Yeah. Thank you, brother. You want to say something? No, that was good. That was, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mother Sunkhul. Okay, so let's just have a look at the other three, four. Um, give rather than take. This is, again, let's have a quick look at uh, what was the theme behind that. So, again, the, the, the other one was boasting about, uh, you know, how strong his army is, how weak <clears throat> the other side is. And this is where we have to be very careful because the other one was always in the mood of <clears throat> taking. And you just had the opposite uh, attitude. He was always in the mood of giving. And taking, we know, taking is very hard because that's where the expectation lies. I want respect from somebody. If we don't get that respect, we get very frustrated. Whereas if we are in the mood of giving, then, then who can stop us from giving our love? Who can stop us giving charity? Who can stop us from doing good deeds nobody can stop us from doing that so then there's no frustration so getting in the mood of giving rather than always in the mood of expecting makes a lot of sense 
And how do we learn to give? Um, apparently, we have something like 80,000 thoughts going through our day every day, uh, our mind every day. And mostly they're negative. So we need to be very careful. We need to turn those into positive thoughts. When a negative thoughts come, you see it and you turn it into a positive thought. Our words should be those of appreciation of others, of gratitude. Very important to have this thank you attitude. Thank you, my dear Lord. That's just like that, um, that bird that we were talking about some time ago who was suffering in the desert. Uh, but his mood completely changed when he, he was advised. Just be in the mood of thankfulness. So even when something went wrong, something hurt, he thanked the Lord. <laughs> and within a short period of time, his luck completely changed. Our actions, they can do, be to help others according to our capacity. And our possessions, we can use again to help others. So give rather than take. Uh, I like that uh, lesson. Fourth lesson was this, take the time to contemplate. We're always very busy, especially if you have small children and um, you've got a job at the same time and you're looking after the household. You know, ladies always have these three jobs going at the same time. And I, I, it's just amazing how uh, you guys cope so well. Um, men may not have so much going on, but somehow they always have an excuse of no time. It's it? called time management. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jed is having a little dig here. <laughs> time management. No time. <laughs> and multitasking. Multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> so find the time to contemplate. Very important. Perhaps in the early in the morning or late at night. Um, and then yes, when we face challenges like Arjun faced challenges. Krishna is very expert. The challenge you definitely don't want, he'll bring it right in front of you. <laughs> and why does he do that? Because he's there with us to face the challenge. So let's not run away from challenges. Let's face them. They may be very tough challenges, but we should understand that Krishna is always there with us. And this, I love this saying. This is an Indian army. <laughs> The more we sweat in peace, the less we bleed in war. <laughs> so it's very good to sweat. When work hard, when they, we don't need to work hard, let's work really, really hard. I'm not talking about uh, you know, our work job doing IT for 40 hours a day when I mean, there's only 24 hours. I'm talking about from the spiritual point of view, work hard, chant, chant with, with great stress, when there is no stress, my dear Lord, please, please help me become close to you. Because when, when the difficult times come, um, that very chanting will assist us because Krishna is there. So there'll be less bleeding when the challenges come, when the wars begin. So when we practice bhakti, when the situation is calm and good, then we will be able to face the challenges challenging situations when they come. So I, I really love this one. Um, face those challenges. And finally was the excuses, you know. We'll come up with a thousand excuses why we can't do bhakti. And Krishna, <laughs> if we want an excuse, Krishna will give us an excuse not to do bhakti. If we want a, uh, a reason to do bhakti, he will give us so many reasons to do bhakti. So we have the challenge is within us. If we want to shy away from doing bhakti, then we can guarantee it. There's going to be so many reasons why we can't do it. Just like Arjun was finding so many reasons, he wanted to uh, have compassion for the other side, which basically means let me let me not do tapasya at a young age. Let me enjoy myself. I don't want to do bhakti. Why should I sit and meditate? Um, enjoyment. He, want, he was worried about, you know, uh, the kingdom and uh, how he would enjoy it without the company of those he loved. 
So let me enjoy, this is basically saying, let me enjoy my senses while I can. Third thing he said was, uh, let me not uh, do sin because I, it's bad karma to kill all these uh, people in front of me. So that's basically saying, well, I don't want to stop worshipping the, 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 the devatas. That's what I've been doing. And that's why I want to continue. And the fourth was destruction of the family and how that would have an impact on the little ones uh, in the future. And uh, Krishna consciousness, uh, the, uh, and the corresponding reason, excuses, uh, Krishna consciousness is not in my family tradition. We worship uh, Lord Shiva or Ganesh. Why should I now change to Krishna? Of course, we're not saying abandon the worship of um, anybody you're worshipping at the moment. Just add Krishna to it, to what you're doing. That's all. So, all these excuses may come and we, we make sure that we don't get hampered by these excuses. So, I suppose um, in terms of those lessons, is anybody not happy or can anybody share that uh, what you have perhaps put into place and seeing the impact that it's had already or anything you'd like to share actually? Don't like it, like it, <laughs> shouldn't be there. What do you think? Yeah, that be like I, like I said earlier on. You know, these lessons are the beginning. You know, in in a sense that we don't uh, try and just remain like blind, like to trust her, and just you know end up you know being blind, following the blind kind of situation. Use our intelligence, lower. You know, don't expect too much, but at the same time, on a level. Uh, that we can uh, tolerate. I mean, like the, you know, you mentioned earlier on that, you know, work, teamwork. I mean, you're going to expect somebody not to perform, you know. You, 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 you're going to come across situations like that, you know. So, as I said, you know, sometimes you have to expect the unexpected, like you say. But mm -hmm. life is like that. So, in, in terms of, uh, making these lessons complement each other um you know watch out for excuses from others but watch out for our own excuses not to do uh in service of krishna you know so when we when we start to dovetail our activities more towards serving krishna our spiritual master of our own because we owe it to ourselves in a way um that's why we've got, got this human birth, you know, mm. so to start, you know. It's good. But yeah, if others have, uh, you know, yeah. experiences of this, then Maybe certainly, you know, they, they can start to share that, you know, I mean, certainly I've tried to give an excuse. It's always a cold day today. I don't think <laughs> <I'm gonna> do. <laughs> we wake up and think, oh, I don't think of my aches and pains and all that. As we get older, but it's tough. But when you're young, like you say, you know, might make hay while you can, while the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. When you're young and healthy and all that, then do bhakti and accumulate as much asset in spiritual sense as you can. So later on, all day, you know, it won't be that tough, you know. Yes, I mean, Guru Maharaj always said this, and he do it now. Uh, don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. And it's a yeah. fact, it's like we, if we don't do it, I mean, later on, when the senses are not working, when the body's aches are, pains are there, at that time, we're going to have to focus on bhajan, on kirtan, on um, meditation, on, on japa. We yeah. may not be able to do so much, but now, whilst we can uh, put some effort in, we can have desire it and then Krishna fulfills yeah, it. Yeah, you know, I mean, when I was, when we were younger, you know, I could drive down to South mm. London, like, no question, mm. you know. <laughs> Tell me, I mean, now it just becomes a challenge, you know, as you get older. Yeah, yeah. I could yeah, run yeah. miles and miles and do anything for the temple and 
That's right. You know, on the right. buildings and construction and this and that, but mm. now you know it's not that easy. So anyway, you know, others can share yeah. their experiences. But yeah, anybody else would like to say anything? Yes, pretty. Um, so this one, watch the excuses to not do rugby. Um, my cousin, he's recently taken interest to um, uh, just the Bhagavad Gita for now and learning stuff from it. Um, not so much the Bhakti or Kirtan aspect. But, mm. um, and um, his sister uh, got, in, got into this Krishna consciousness just a few years before him. Um, and the same stuff that they went through, I've, I go through as well, where we're like trying to explain to our mothers um, about uh, yes. why all the different deity worships. And in the Bhagavad Gita, it says this, um, you know, that if it's just Krishna, it's all fine. But they, I can understand them getting a little uh, uh, annoyed at times as well. Um, you know, like it's a, okay, so he says that, but this is something that we've been doing, so we do. And mm -hmm. I've asked my mum, like, do you know the philosophy behind it? She'll be like, no, we just, we, you know, if they asked their parents why they did it, their parents would just say, this is just the way it is. So <laughs> they've never, they've never actually known any philosophy. And even though they may mm. have asked the questions, I don't think their parents may have known either. Um, yeah. But for, for these people, like, I think my mom said she, she, she did get a guru or something like that from India, but um, you know, this was, decades ago um but like i've you know I, I i don't see there's any form of like actual practice there of how we say 16 rounds and you know mm. all of this extra stuff um what do you do in that situation because um it seems like they're, they're, they're doing bhakti in in a way like you know the you know they've you know when they'll do the arti and stuff or come divide mm. or wash the deities and stuff so um yeah just not to the I, I don't know about my cousin's mum, but um, he, the way he's, he makes it out, she's very going to the temple, this Ram Mandir, and, you know, she has the deities at home. And I know a few other aunties as well. Like, yeah, they they would go back to Godhead or somewhere, right? Or you, or you, or it's only what's in their mind, really, what the Almighty is. Like, is it Brahman or a mm. real place? That's, that's, the only stuff so i i guess with me that's where my clash with mom could come when it comes to about well why why are we doing this why are we doing that yeah in terms of destination krishna lays it out i think in the seventh and the ninth chapters that those who worship the demigods they will go to the demigods mm -hmm. uh, whose fruits are limited and temporary he also says don't disturb uh, necessarily those who are worshiping so I would not be inclined to say to somebody, don't worship, because yeah. they may lose their faith even in what they have. Yeah. At least, at least they've got faith in something beyond just their own ability. So that's something. And yeah. indirectly, they're worshipping Krishna. Krishna. He says that also. The, the uh, people are worshipping the demigods. They're worshipping me, but they don't know it. They're doing it indirectly. So that's yeah. okay as well. I would simply say, look, uh, I wouldn't argue with somebody who uh, has a particular interest in certain deity. Mm. All I would say is add, add Krishna, isn't it? Add, mm -hmm. add this to your life as well. But the, I think that they, they do worship Krishna, like what Jan Marshman and things like mm. that, yeah. don't they? Mm. Yes, mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So they, 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 they do worship, you know, yes. all the different aspects, yes. <laughs> really. Um, my take on this would be that um, you being the daughter, I, you know, if, if you can get yourself fixed in Krishna consciousness, you can deliver them no matter, no matter what stage they are, are at. Is this, is, I, don't, I don't know if you guys know this ritual, something that's been taking place a couple of days, something about Pani Charanu for, for past Pitra or like people who've passed away in the family. Mm. They yeah, are, sh are giving, give, yeah. yeah, and this has been happening in these last few days. And um, so I, I was just, I was just saying, I told my mom the nursing her story about um, mm. Prahlad mm. asking for yeah. inspiration. And, <laughs> and um, 
and uh, yeah, but she goes, no. So I, I know within the Srimad Bhagavat, it talks about there being a Pitralog, but I'd, I've forgotten the uh, the store, uh, the uh, science and all that in there. Um, but yeah, they, they're, she's not just her, loads of other yeah. uh, cl uh, close relatives, they've all been like feeding water to a certain plants, so having certain rituals or ceremony or puja yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they have they have that, and I and I, I I thought the same stuff. I said, well, if if you're if you're a, a pure bhakt like Prahlad, then you know, mm. twenty one before twenty one coming, you're, yeah. we're all we're all fine. But yeah, so but again, she doesn't know the philosophy behind it because I asked her yeah. what's the what's the stuff, and um, yeah, so Nothing, and the I same with my cousin yeah. as well. Yeah, I I think so, somewhere I think Krishna does say you know you sh you should. Well, you know, uh, offer the pindan to your to your ancestors in order mm -hmm. to liberate them. You do this puja, mm -hmm. you know, in, if mm -hmm. they are suffering somewhere, it will liberate mm -hmm. them, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but this is that is only a certain time of the year. Uh, yeah. if, if you're practicing Krishna consciousness throughout the year, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you know they will they will see you practicing as well. But if you are if you yourself are fixed in Krishna consciousness, uh, then you know once you leave this planet again, you know you'll be able to liberate them as well. Um, you know your forefathers as well, and maybe get them in a better position as well. But uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. But also, whilst you're here, mm. you want to try to encourage. How do you encourage them? Yes, they go to Ram temples. They'll go to Krishna temples. They'll they'll we view Krishna and Ram as just demigods, another or just uh, gods, just like the other mm. gods, mm. thinking that uh, the other gods are, are like uh, Ganesh. They're all independent of Krishna, but they're not independent. They're dependent. So how do you change that mm. view? It's not easy. Um, certainly, you you as a um, <coughs> daughter or, or or you know the child telling your parent <laughs> is not right etiquette anyway yeah. um, and certainly wouldn't go down very well um, I, I think the only way you can do it is like um, you know gently saying look can uh, you know is you probably already have Krishna's picture or your mom has a picture of Krishna on the altar or perhaps Mala when they're doing the chanting they may be doing chanting uh, for Lord Shiva or Ganpati. So I remember my mom, um, mm. when we started Krishna Consciousness, uh, after maybe a little while, a couple of years, she added um, the Mahamantra to her chanting. One round she would do every day. And then she started doing more and more. <clears throat> but it was a slow process. And it didn't matter to me because I knew you know, in her heart, she was following whatever she was following. I, I wasn't going to change it uh, because she followed a little bit of Jainism, a little bit of something, Arvindos. No, but it's mainly Jainism. Yeah. yeah. But she had a few things. But she added Krishna to her life. Um, and that was very gratifying uh, for me because at least she was, you know, taking to Krishna consciousness. And she would come to the temples, etc., 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 cook for the uh, devotees, cook for the deities. Um, so Hare whatever Krishna. one can do is good. Yes, <coughs> come on, she. Yeah. <laughs> okay, listening to, uh, I've got a couple of points that I would just like. Wow. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, regarding this Pitru thing, water, uh, the uh, time and all that. I, I've been doing it since I got married, obviously followed my mother-in-law's instructions and uh, as a time progressed and I've, I've realized that yes, Pitrus, you have to do certain things. So I have carried on, but I have not imposed it to my daughter-in-law. I mention it to my son and his wife, if they feel they can do it, if they understand why they do it or dig out more information because I just did it because I was told to do it. Yes. So that's a scenario. And the other thing is about Mataji. I have got Kurdevi, Harshad mm -hmm. Master. Mm -hmm. When mother-in-law say this is our Kur Devi and do this, this, this. So I have like a good daughter-in-law have followed it up till now, but I don't impose it on my daughter-in-law because I feel 
uh, I don't want to burden her. If she wants to, she will do it. If not, then I will ask for forgiveness because it's just the way it is. <clears throat> And the other thing I want to share, and I might get a bit emotional, so excuse me. My father was always a Ram Bhakt. Mother was a Ram Bhakt. She used to have a Vrat say, if somebody says, say Ram, then only she'll put something in her mouth. So she was a really staunch <laughs> Ram Bhakt. Okay? And she died on a Ram Nomi Divas as well. So, wow. The father, he uh, died a little bit late. So he was older, by 86, whatever. And he was a very staunch book, as in like, uh, he never touched meat in his life. He had never touched alcohol in his life, never gambled. He was, he read Bhagavad Gita quite well, but not Prabhupada. So, you know, his knowledge was there, but not as depth. But the, the thing I'm trying to share is, is that <clears throat> when he uh, used to watch us or see us become Krishna conscious, his heart was melting and he used to really feel happy. And okay. one day he came to my our house and uh, he was talking to my husband, <clears throat> Mother Sudan, and he, he was saying, so you do the uh, chanting on the beads, uh, Mother Sudan said, yes, sir, we do chanting on the beads. So my father said, well, I do Ram, 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 and I just do the beads. <clears throat> So my husband, obviously, he said, when we do one bead and we do full mantra, hmm. 60 words, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So my father was quite taken back and said, you do 16 words on one bead? <laughs> and he was quite impressed with us that, you know, we are following that. And he wanted to learn. And I think my husband sat down and he said, look, this is how you do it. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I feel that he, Mother Sudan was like, almost like a guru to him because he was yeah. teaching him. And he felt quite happy that some of my children are following something that he would have loved everybody to do it. And mm. after that short time, he passed away. So I think mm. that, yes. on what, what I'm trying to say that in all his life, he was a very staunch devotee, but then in the end, he did Maha Mantra. So mm. I'll share with you guys. So this is the impact children can have, isn't it? Mm. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Mm. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, along those lines, like my mother in law, every Diwali, you know, you have to do like this Nived for the Kur Devi and things like that. So she used to do it and she, she's uh, tell me to do it, was, uh, you know, to offer it to the Pitrus. So what I would, uh, in my mind, I would just say, I offer it to Krishna first and then to, uh, ask Krishna to offer it to the Pitrus. Mm. I didn't tell her that because you know, I didn't want to upset her. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, this is what I would do in my mind. And I would, I would say, Krishna, you know, um, you know, offer this to the Pitrus because that's what, you know, the issue wants us to do. So that, that's how I would do it, you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah it, it, you know, I, I also was following because she was following it as well. And again, yeah. I my, with my daughter, in law I haven't told her to do that. It's up to them, you know. Yeah, they know, exactly. they know what's best, you know, uh, what needs to be done. So you know, it's up to them to take that up, that practice. Yeah, but, luckily yeah. they're Krishna conscious. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, the 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 reason I just accepted it because when mm. you question to them, they don't know themselves. They because yeah. they've been told to do it and they just did it. So yeah. at, the end of, at the end of the day, they did it for instructions and they followed it. But these mm. days, youngsters question why. And then <laughs> I, I, our generation is like, okay, you, you did what the, you were told to. But now if the yeah. younger generation question, you say, okay, do it if you want to. If you don't want to, leave mm. it. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's good to Thank question. You. Yeah. yeah. It's good to question. Good. Thank Actually, you. there is a scenario in the Mahabharat where... I can't remember which devotee it is, but his parents were struggling in, um, in the heavens, or in Bitulok. And Krishna advised that person, this is why they're struggling, because you have not offered water. Mm -hmm. Who was that? I can't remember which uh, devotee is. We, if we come across it, we'll let you mm -hmm. know. But that's a very interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. But definitely for forefathers, there is some obligation. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you become fully Krishna conscious, then all the debts are automatically paid. It's like uh, Madhusudan was saying the other day, you know, when you water the root, mm. uh, the whole plant gets uh, nourished. 
but if you try to just water the leaves, the plant will die. So you can't um, necessarily serve the whole of humanity, but you can serve Krishna and in that way nourish uh, your own bhakti, but also help everybody else in the process. Yeah, and I, I think uh, also like uh, if you do the uh, pin down, whatever, it's also to purify yourself as well. It's not just the pitras as well, because you know you 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 your focus is again you know okay you know I'm offering this to Krishna, uh, to offer it to the pitras. So you know your focus is also like that. that, that. I owe a debt to my ancestors for being here in the first place as well, and you know I thank Krishna for. for for that opportunity to you know, be in this human form so that you can do something. Okay, thank you yes. very much. Uh, oh, sorry, yes. Pretty, you wanted to say something? I think Prabhu wants to say something. Oh, Mother Sun Prabhu, yeah? No, I'm just, uh, just a quick comment that, you know, when, when you're in a family situation or anything and, and you, you start to do things now with proper understanding, because people, people, you know, in my family members might have been doing it just out of tradition or out of sort of just following one, following the other, and then from generation to generation. And sometimes there's nothing wrong because they've been following the Sanatana Dharma principles, but without sort of understanding and without yeah. questioning. Yeah. So it's become like a tradition. But nothing wrong with that, you know, going to the temple and these things like that. But once we start to become Krishna conscious, it does bring about a certain change in, in us to start with. And then when we try to implement the change in the, in the family, it does bring resistance from others. It is bound to, you know. And, and, and then it, it is for us to sort of reassure the members of the family that, look, you know, I'm not going to turn into some weird, creature you know like <laughs> something else you know I, i'm still part of the family I'm, I'm meaning to do well but sometimes like in, in the hindus you know we we are near krishna but yeah we are so far away from krishna because mm -hmm. we don't really understand that much so a lot of the hindus principles are like there's too much kitchery you know like <laughs> hodgepodge they don't have proper understanding contaminated with mayavad and impersonalism and this and that, you know, but now with Prabhupada's instructions, with Bhagavad Gita understanding, you're doing things with clarity. So it takes time to so give them time, give them the space, have your own space and then express it, set the standard. And then slowly, slowly you see that they will change and in time they'll accept. Because I know in my own family, when I took early on Krishna consciousness, you know, I still have resistance to my, they come in my house and say, oh, he's into Hare Krishna, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and but, then but sometimes you go around and say, oh, they're into this, they're into that, oh, you know, just, but you just do what you can and in time, they will mm. uh, understand, you know, in time. But Krishna is in their heart as well, you understand, as a devotee, you understand. Krishna is within their heart and slowly, slowly Krishna will guide them, give them the intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Priti? Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks to Kanchan Mataji for sharing that. That was nice. Mm -hmm. And also, like, um, in this conversation I had with my cousins, I was just uh, telling them as well, um, uh, you can't uh, get them too stressed about Krishna as well, <laughs> otherwise they might start going away from Krishna. Like I can't believe he said that, and which I guess, which I guess, it's like an offense. It's like yeah. when we uh, go out book distribution and uh, people yeah. slowly start turning away. It's like don't don't go too far, otherwise you, you're turning them away. So um, yeah, yeah, that's very true. Just, and just give them Krishna prasad, and they will at least sure. eat and enjoy that. <laughs> They'll yeah. purify them. <laughs> there are also some uh, Gujarati books, of course, um, if, uh, you know, the, your cousins may want to share with their parents. Okay, uh, yeah. That, that, that may have an impact because when you sometimes read, if they read these books, of course, how did we change? It was through the reading of the Bhagavad Gita. So that can, of course, have a huge transformational impact. So. Yeah, I'll I'll inform them. Um, 
they recently went to Watford, so they may have come across with records. Mm. But I'll, I'll still, I'll still inform them if, yeah. if the parents yeah. are interested. Yeah, and it's probably not something that you want to push it down the parents' throat, but just hey, you look, I just came across this. Maybe you may be yeah. interested in having a read. And just leave it around a bit, and they yeah. might pick it up one day and just go through it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think in, in our general behavior, when we take on to Krishna consciousness, we want to pray and we want to behave in such a way that we want to attract others to Krishna. And by our own, you know, sometimes we as devotees, sometimes we don't want to become too hard headed and put everybody down and saying, you, you, you know, you're a demigod worshipper and this and that, you know, not to condemn anyone. Uh, we want to attract them to Krishna. So our behavior should be so compassionate nature. Then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll actually attract them to Krishna. We don't want to repel them. Mm. That's right. That's a nice point. Yeah. I remember one uh, devotee, one, one uh, family was telling me, a uh, devotee went to their house in the 70s. And uh, this family had many pictures of demigods in their house. So the devotee would go and turn the pictures uh, around, you know, so that they would uh, be facing the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <quite> interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Arun, yeah. you wanted to say something? It's just, uh, it's Kali, we are in Kali at the moment. So uh, any kind of bhakti is good for us? Obviously, Krishna consciousness is better, you know, prayer. Doing Krishna bhakti would be better, but as we are in Kaliyug, any kind of bhakti is better for us, no? It's a start. If, yeah. we, if somebody is worshipping demigods, uh, mm -hmm. or, or anybody actually, worshipping somebody other than themselves, uh, mm -hmm. of some supreme nature, mm -hmm. something is better than nothing. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm saying. That's what I'm yes. saying. Yeah, yeah. For so sure. We're in Kaliyug now, so I think any yeah. kind of uh, prayers or bhakti, would that help us or will help help someone if they, I don't know. It just depends on the desire, even the, even the Mahamantra. Mm. If one is praying for Mahamantra to get uh, material gains, one will get material gains. <laughs> oh, okay. If one wants to merge with God, when praying with the Mahamantra, they'll merge with God. Okay, okay. So uh, um, if one prays earnestly, sincerely to the Supreme Lord that I want to become your servant and engage me, then that's what we will get. So a lot depends on the desire of the person praying. If one is praying to say, I'll give an example, Lord Shiva for material gains, one will get material gains. But if one is praying to Lord Shiva, please um, bring me closer because you're always meditating. Yeah. Who are you meditating on? Let me bring me closer to who you're meditating on, then Lord Shiva will do that. Mm. He will take us to Krishna. Mm. So in one sense, yes, uh, even, the, even the gopis who are the closest to uh, Krishna, they used to pray to Katyani, uh, who's a demigoddess, mm. to get close to Krishna. That's okay. the whole idea. Okay. It, it, you know, the, the mood is always, the aim is always the Supreme Lord. Uh, for for us, um, so we are, we try to go through the guru straight to Krishna. Um, but if others are praying to devatas, don't disturb them. Mm -hmm. Don't disturb them because mm -hmm. at least at least they are doing some. They have faith in something. Yeah. Uh, Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they go to the temple. Yeah, at, at least I suppose as demigods, uh, they will if they if they're really into it, they will attain the planet of the demigods and then come back to Earth uh, after they've exhausted their good karma. So yeah. that's 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 you know what can you do? You you can't um, at least you're not going to go to hell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. No, thank you, Bhavani. Did you want to say something? Kanchan? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, Kanchan Kamakshi, I don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. About my sister was just talking, uh, yeah, and I it just thought came to my mind. I was like that, uh, who to uh, pray to and who. 
when I, once I read the Bhagavad Gita, there's no higher truth than me. That just stuck in my head and that's it. That just brought me to Krishna and nothing will change my mind. Thank yeah. you. Yes, yes. Few words, but very, very pointed. Yeah. I think that's right. If you read the right Gita, because some Gitas will say that uh, when Krishna is saying worship him, he means worship uh, the formless within him. <laughs> I, I don't know how they get to that interpretation, but they get there somehow. So, Popeye's Gita is uh, spot on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very, very nice uh, discussion. Um, we only uh, covered uh, the <laughs> first chapter. So, uh, we'll see how far we get tomorrow. Um, and then we'll continue with. Um, well, we've got a few other plans for uh, Saturday. Saturday is actually Ganesh Chaturthi. 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 So we thought we'd have a little discussion on Ganpati to, to understand what is his position, because no doubt he's a very special personality. So let's try to understand uh, his personality and how, how if, and we know a lot of people who do Ganpati, Puja, etc. So we can understand, let's try to understand in what mood that Puja can be done, should be done. Yeah, because we, we, would, we always worship Gan Ganesh before starting off years or anything like that. So yeah, reasoning right. behind that. Yeah. That's right. So we can go to um, the Nishinga Kavach. Karuna, are you with us? Hey, Krishna. Hey, Krishna.